All right. Good evening, everybody. Let's see who all is live online right now. My request to everybody is that uh, if you are watching me on Facebook and if you're watching me on YouTube, please allow Facebook and YouTube to access your name. Otherwise, our stream will definitely not show your name. It will show any Facebook user and any YouTube user. Uh, I already see school counselors joining in. Janvi Ruparal, hey there. How are you? So, ladies and gentlemen, we already have Janvi Ruparal, counselor for Don Bosco International School, Mumbai, joining in. Shobit Jain, Malika Dixit, your live feed has already started coming in. Give me time because I need to acknowledge some of them. Monica Sharma, Shivani Rupa Bhinda, five others, Shripati Nag. All right, this is going super awesome. Way above 100 and 123 now, way above 123 and counting. Let's see, where do we go? All right, today we have two really beautiful souls uh, representing University of Queensland, the University of Queensland. Let's not forget the. And uh, before I patch them in, we'll wait for more people to join in. Neha Baswani, good evening. Why do you have to add G to it, man? Neha, you can't be doing that to me, for God's sake. It's my, my name is so pretty, man. It's Abhishek. Don't call me G. Shripati Nag, Nitika Sahani, Jyoti Vej, Parul Dhingra, Sakshi Kaur. All right, this is going way, way too awesome. Let me quickly jump to other Facebook pages and, and welcome more people from there. Rachit Jain, Rohan Bhatia. Okay, Churantan. This is going good. This is super. Pragya Thakur. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Aprajita Kalra says, looking forward to the session. Thank you, Aprajita. And, and thank you so very much, everybody, who is allowing uh, StreamYard to access your name. Sharu Arora. Hello, Abhishek, sir. You're doing a great job. All right. You are doing a great job, too, because uh, it's, uh, it's kind of really nice and humbling when uh, all of you, almost like 400 plus right now, all of you join at this ungodly hour, 10 o'clock in the night, and support me day in and day out. Okay, so let's see. Uh, before we patch my friends from the University of Queensland, it is Friday night, and uh, it is about time that today I recite one of my poems to you. Uh, so those of you who will not be able to understand Hindi, I will try and translate it into English because that's the, uh, you know, these are the only two languages I know. Mane Gujarati nathi avartu, ami bangla bolte parina, ami bangla bushte parina. Mala marathi yet nai. So the only language I would know is Hindi and English. So I'll try and definitely, definitely uh, convert it, translate it if possible. Okay, so I have my diary and uh, here we go. So I, I'll, I'll take you through a little bit of storyline here. This is kind of my story. Okay, and uh, some of you have been listening to me year after year, week after week, month after month, live after live. Uh, so I come from a very humble background uh, and, and, and uh, I'm proud that my dad could afford a Bajaj Chetak. It was that one equipment which used to start at a 45 degree angle, some technology. And uh, uh, that was the only asset that I could see in my house. Now, from there to... Uh, you know, three BMWs in my house. It's kind of a, it, it's kind of a dream. It feels like a dream. And uh, I never thought it would be possible, but somehow it did happen. So, is pure darmiya, meri life mein kuch ghatnaye hui, aur un ghatnao ke upar, maine kuch pangtiya likhi. Uh, aur ye conversation ho rahi hai, mere aur mere dad ke beech mein. Aur chalu karte hai, jab mein bachcha tha. To jab mein bachcha tha, तब डैड मुझे स्कूल छोड़ के आया करते थे अपने बजाज चेतक पे और बगल से एक लंबी गाड़ी ज़ूम करके निकल जाती थी तो जब लंबी गाड़ी निकलती थी तो मैं डैड को बोलता था डैड कभी हम भी ये ले पाएंगे क्या कभी ऐसा होगा कि हम भी कभी लंबी गाड़ी में बैठेंगे तो डैड को जवाब देते थे बट उनकी भावनाओं को मैंने दो पंक्तियों में समेटा है वो बोलते थे सपनों का कोई दोष नहीं है सपनों का कोई दोष नहीं है सपनों को बुलंद तू कर सपनों का कोई दोष नहीं है सपनों को बुलंद तू कर चिंता मत कर चिंतन कर तू कल को अपने वश में कर सो देर इज नो हार्म इन ड्रीमिंग यू शुड डेफिनेटली ड्रीम बेग बट यू शुड नॉट वरी बट थिंक 
चिंता मत कर चिंतन कर तू सिर्फ एक मात्रा का अंतर है चिंता नहीं करनी है चिंतन करना है वी डू नॉट हैव टू वरी बट वी हैव टू स्टार्ट थिंकिंग एंड प्लानिंग टाइम आगे निकलता है और मैं डैड को जाकर के बोलता हूं कि पापा बहुत मेहनत करनी पड़ती होगी ना इन सब बड़ी गाड़ियों में बैठने के लिए तो डैड फिर कुछ जवाब देते हैं दो पंक्तियों में समेटूंगा उनको और अगर मेरी आवाज आप तक पहुंचे तो एक बार बाबा लिख दीजिएगा पालेगा अपने सपनों को तू पालेगा अपने सपनों को तू बदलेगा तू अपनी हकीकत पालेगा अपने सपनों को तू बदलेगा तू अपनी हकीकत जीवन है संघर्ष भी होगा गले लगा ले हर मुसीबत कहानी थोड़ी सी और आगे बढ़ती है और आ, मैं कॉलेज में स्टेप करने वाला था बाहर जाके पढ़ने की बहुत इच्छा थी पैसा था नहीं स्कॉलरशिप के बहाने कोशिश करने वाला था तो डैड के पास गया फिर घबराया हुआ सा तो डैड ने बोला फिर उनको उन्होंने जो बोला उसको दो पंक्तियों में समेटूंगा और आवाज अगर आप तक पहुंचे तो आ, प्लीज वाह वाह जरूर करिएगा एंड आई कैन सी सम वाह वाज ऑलरेडी कमिंग इन टू द फीड राइट नाउ थैंक यू डैड ने कहा मिलेगी मंजिल चलने पर ही मिलेगी मंजिल चलने पर ही चलित कभी ना अटका है मिलेगी मंजिल चलने पर ही चलित कभी ना अटका है दुबक के बैठा घर के अंदर वो इंसान ही भटका है कहानी और आगे बढ़ती है मैं कॉपोरेट वर्ल्ड में कदम रखता हूं और पता चलता है कि यहां तो सब एक दूसरे का गला काटने पे उतारू है एवरीबडी इज ट्राइंग टू बी इन द राइट रेस विदाउट रियलाइजिंग वेदर दे विन और दे लूज दे शिल रिमेन अ राइट बट एवरीबडी इज ट्राइंग टू बी इन द सुपर एग्रेसिव राइट रेस ट्राइंग टू पुल इच अदर डाउन लाइक रैट्स तो मैं डैड के पास घबराया हुआ पहुंचता हूं कि क्या मैं भी दूसरे का गला काटू और दूसरे को नीचे गेर करके आगे बढ़ू तो डैड फिर जवाब देते हैं बोलते हैं पतझड़ है सावन भी होगा पतझड़ है सावन भी होगा मौसम आना जाना है पतझड़ है सावन भी होगा मौसम आना जाना है राम है बेटा तो रावण भी होगा यह टकरार पुराना है my request to everybody who is listening to me is that we have young kids who are going to be adults soon we really need to teach them that uh, world is a zero sum game you come empty handed you go empty handed what you do in the middle is something that defines you so instead of judging everything into good and bad and black and white if you start putting yourself into the shoes of the other person and start understanding yourself in as per the other person world will be a much better place so where where there is a white there is a black and where there is a black there is a white where there is a good there is an evil because these are all relatives and that's why if there is a ram there is a ravan too aage kahani badhti hai do stanzas aur hain uh, aapko sunaunga aage kahani badhti hai aur uh, main dad ko bolta hu ki मुझे इन रावणों से बहुत डर लगता है घबराहट होती है मुझे इनसे लड़ने में है ही क्यों ये खराबी है ही क्यों ये बुराई है क्यों दुनिया में तो डैड जवाब देते हैं पतझड़ है सावन भी होगा मौसम आना जाना है राम है रावण भी होगा ये टकरार पुराना है अपने अंदर के रावण को अपने अंदर के रावण को जिस पल मार भगाएगा राम को ढूंढना बंद करेगा राम खुद ही में पाएगा राम को ढूंढना बंद करेगा राम खुद ही में पाएगा सो दैट वॉज माई पोम फॉर द डे एंड नाउ अबाउट टाइम दैट वी शुड इन्वाइट टू लवली गेस्ट फ्रॉम द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ क्वींसलैंड द नंबर टू यूनिवर्सिटी इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया वन ऑफ द टॉप वर्ल्ड फिफ्टी यूनिवर्सिटी विच इज नाउ वर्किंग ऑन द वैक्सीन फॉर कोविड देर आर ओनली टू यूनिवर्सिटीज वेर sepi one of the leading bodies which works on uh, viruses and uh, immunological disorders gave two universities the task of uh, creating vaccine one we know is oxford and the other is the university of queensland so ladies and gentlemen let me add 
Ramiyatha Varghese and Anaga Shetty onto the live right now. Welcome, Remy. Welcome, Anaga. How are you guys doing? One by one. Thank you, Abhishek, uh, for a great poem and a great time. Uh, we're doing well. Um, thank you for inviting us to this platform. Anaga, over to you. Thanks so much, Abhishek. And I think I also need to thank you for, for translating that into English because <laughs> that really helped me. <laughs> So it's good to be on with you. Uh, excited for this chat. Thank you so very much. So there are 632 right now, fluctuating between 625 and 650. Mothers, fathers, and high school students listening to both of you. My request to both of you is keep it as candid as possible. Uh, speak right from the heart. This is uh, not a webinar where you and me need to be at our formal best. Uh, I just gave you the idea and the hint, uh, you know, the kind of crazy stuff I do on my live. And uh, you can expect some more uh, during the during the show. My first question is that you guys are representing uh, one of the finest universities in the world. Uh, you guys are representing a destination which is uh, coming up really, really well in last so many years. And obviously, post COVID, uh, the, the, the field for US teams a little shaken. I, as a career coach, uh, for both of you, because uh, you guys do not know me, uh, people come and listen to me on my Facebook lives because uh, not just because of high school moms, that's a great support that I drive. And I generally tell everybody that uh, it's kind of weird that as a, as a father, uh, I'm driving high school moms, but then motherhood has no gender. And, uh, and that's the reason why I drive high school moms. Uh, my question to you as a career coach is that, uh, I have also started talking about alternate destinations other than US, but uh, I would want your perspective. And uh, this is a question to Remy. Remy, I would want your perspective. Why do you see this you know, increase in demand for Australia as a destination, study destination? Uh, I've been in Australia last year for, for a month. Uh, beautiful place. Uh, I, I must say. Uh, so, for for kids who are going to study there, it's a it's a it's three four years of uh, rigorous study, but in one of the best and beautiful countries in the world, mind you. I'm telling you. All right. So why why this this momentum towards Australia, I mean? Um So Abhishek, um, I can relate to uh, uh, what you're asking me because um, my first experience of going to Australia was when I was doing my MBA. Uh, in the um, United Kingdom, and I went there to do my research thesis, and I was right there in Brisbane. I really absolutely loved my experience being there. People are very, very friendly. Australia as a nation always um, had a very high education reputation, and even during the times when, almost a decade before, when I was planning for my studies abroad, uh, it has been in the top three most popular international study destinations in the world. And the country itself is home to 39 universities, out of which seven of these universities are also in the top 100 universities in the world. And if you talk about the education system in Australia, it's really highly regulated by the Australian government. And they maintain high standards. The curriculum is very agile, uh, very, um, uh, very up to date, constantly reviewed. They match with the industry requirements. And these days, uh, they understand the Indian market. They understand what Indian students are looking for. There's been a lot of support system given by universities back to our country. And with that comes uh, a lot of uh, things that Australia has got to offer. And very little in fact is that Australia is also very uh, innovative study destination. You talk about Google Maps, you talk about Wi-Fi, you talk about black box flight recorder, MRI machine technology, penicillin as a medical antibiotic. These are all... Uh, beautiful inventions of Australia again, which not everybody knew about. Until very uh, very recently, universities started um, their outreach uh, and started interacting with much more students outside of the uh, nation. And even in terms of trade, um, with its proximity to Asia Pacific, uh, you can see a lot of foreign companies coming um, uh, to Australia, seeing Australia as a place to do business. And almost 40% of Australia's top 1,000 companies by revenue of foreign owned and um, that shows uh, you know in terms of trade again uh, there's a lot of traction and even the viral summit that happened recently between Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Prime Minister Modi 
um, they focus more towards uh, the bilateral relations and um, obviously education was one of the key focus uh, as part of this discussion. So with the kind of initiatives by the Australian government, uh, state governments, the Trade and Investment Commissions, collaborating with Australian universities, all of these have added up to the momentum of making Australia one of the top higher education destinations. Wow. All right. So, so multiple reasons. I was also not aware that MRA machines that, that we use for diagnosis uh, are a product of Australia. This is super awesome. Yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Remy. Uh, before we go to Naga for our question, let me quickly welcome Shobha, Samaira, Nehawadwa, Raghavendra. And I can see five principals right now online, and I'll not take your name, ma'am. I appreciate your privacy. Uh, Sonika Kaur, Ravneet, Parminder, Monica Deep. Thank you so very much for joining in, guys. Uh, and people are, are, are still pouring in. Anaga, my question to you is, um, whenever I, as a career coach, and this is this is kind of funny, uh, and, 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 and ladies and gentlemen, I, I want you to take a learning out of my question as well. Uh, when, I, when I coach a student, and I ask a student or a parent, where do you want to go? Okay irrespective of the student's uh, choice of destination, irrespective of the student's academics, irrespective of the student's extracurriculars, irrespective of whether the student will fit in into a large school or a small school or a school with less number of students, uh, you know, or the weather climate, uh, they end up answering this question. And my question is, where do you want to go? And they will say, Yale, Harvard, Carnegie Mellon, MIT, Oxford, Stanford, LSC, that's it, right? And I'm like, okay, uh, possibly everybody will not get into them. So my question to you is, there are some amazing universities across the globe, apart from just the Ivy Leagues and the Russell groups of the world, right? Uh, one such university is the University of Queensland. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not being told by Remy or Anaga. I am going and I am keeping all my experience, backing this up, the University of Queensland is one of the finest universities you can look at. And you should definitely consider, if you're looking at Australia as a destination, uh, you should definitely consider applying to the UQ. Okay, so my question is, in general, there is a perception gap between the Ivy Leagues and the Russell groups and the other universities. What is your take on that? Well, Abhishek, See, it's absolutely true. You know, yes, students have very big aspirations. And uh, I must acknowledge that with the current flow of information that the internet offers, students are doing their due diligence in re researching about world top universities. Right? But having said that, yes, there is still a perception gap amongst the Indian school students about what a group of eight university is in Australia. So what we do is we draw a comparison. The Ivy League in America is equivalent to the group of eight universities in India. And I like the fact that you specifically picked out out of everything that Remy said, you, you picked up the MRI machine. Now that is a technology that was developed at UQ, which is now being used all over the world. So that's just kind of the research that we're involved with. Now, um, of course, it is important to know that, you know, that's great research that's being done in our universities. Also, it transcends into the classroom and students are benefited by this. So the fact that, like Remy said earlier, um, the universities from Australia are now doing a lot more outreach. We are talking to students. We're making sure that they're aware that in comparison to Ivy Leagues, if you want to look at a different destination like Australia, like you mentioned, um, a group of eight is going to be the right choice. So, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> and, and now I understand group of eight, right? Uh, my Most of the mothers listening to you would not understand. It's kind of a jargon to them. And like I said, there will be certain questions where I'll put you into the back foot. Explain me what this group of eight is. Okay. Because so I know one eight, one eight is a restaurant by Virat Kohli. All right. I know that <laughs> they serve some amazing cocktails. And, and I know one eight, I, you know, as a parent, I possibly might not know what is group of eight. Okay. So okay. please explain. So I did not know what one eight was, and I'm glad I do now. <laughs> So uh, I'll return the favor and tell you what a group of eight university is. So we're a group of eight universities in Australia that are research intensive universities. So we pay a lot of importance to research. Everything that we teach you in a classroom is backed by research. So um, we are the ones that are the top tier in Australia. And so it's these universities, these eight universities 
um, that are always kept in comparison with the Ivy League in America or the Russell Group in um, Europe. All right. Okay. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, that's Anaga Shetty and uh, Remy Vargis. I Remy, I'll not be able to pronounce that complete name. Now. Please, you gotta have you. You really gotta pardon me for that. All right, Remyatha Vargis. All right. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Fine. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have these two beautiful souls uh, talking to you heart to heart. Please, please do me a favor and ask me some really nasty and difficult questions so that I can I can actually you know put those questions to them. Ask me about scholarships. Ask me about some difficult difficult stuff that you really think. Uh, you really need answers for and as parents i can tell you you have the right to ask anything and everything because it's the it's about the future of your child and it should definitely not come easy all right Remy, my question to you is group of eight i understand it really really well how do you position university of queensland and uh, and explain me a little bit more i mean uh, give me a a, a a virtual tour or a, or a verbal tour of university of queensland Okay, uh, I can take a day to talk about it, uh, but I would still like to throw some light about University of Queensland. So University of Queensland is founded in, in 1909, so we are over 100 years old university. Uh, yes, we're located, yes, we are 100, over 100 years old, and we're located in Brisbane, which is the capital city of the Australian state of Queensland. Um, and we talk about rankings, we are ranked in the world's top 50 universities. Um, uh, and UQ is one of the Australia's leading research and teaching institutions, as Anaga spoke about. Obviously, the founding members of the group of eight universities. And most of our programs, if you really see, are ranked with the top 10 in Australia and also in the top 15 in the world. Um, so in terms of uh, delivery, uh, in terms of teaching quality, um, uh, we, we have all these stars for us. To talk about our student community, we have a very diverse student community. We have over 53,600 students studying at the university, uh, which includes 18,500 international students from 145 different nationalities. Um, with that, in terms of our teaching quality, um, our faculties have won maximum number of national teaching awards than any other universities in Australia. And we are also one of the leading universities uh, for research and 100% of our research subjects are above world standards and we have a range of options for students starting from undergrad, postgraduate um, to PhD, uh, even certifications and diplomas uh, for students to take up. Uh, having said that, um, you pick any field of study, um, engineering, business, arts, uh, science, medicine, behavioral sciences, humanities, social sciences, you name it, we have all these fields of study within all the levels of study, in fact. And as you spoke about some time before, uh, UQ is only one of those three organizations approached by SETI uh, to develop a vaccine against the novel coronavirus, and which is in the trial phase right now. So uh, we have a lot more to offer, but I'll be happy to speak more about uh, UQ and tell you more about our university and program specific information or faculty specific information as we meet me tomorrow for the fair. So uh, this is in a nutshell what UQ is all about. Obviously, to remember, we are the top 50 ranked university in the world. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, before we go to Anaga, uh, I, I, I have a very, very, very zehen make share of it. Now, Anaga will say that Abhishek, you have to translate it. It's so, so difficult to translate everything, Anaga. But now it's coming, it's coming. Now it's coming, it's coming. If it's coming, it's coming. If it's बात अगर मतलब की हो तो सब समझ जाते हैं लेकिन बातों का मतलब समझना किसी किसी को आता है so the reason why I'm reciting this share to you is because you know day after day you come and listen to my live and you listen to these phenomenal personalities who come and talk to you uh, it is not just what they're talking you need to go between the lines and understand that world is beyond US world is beyond UK world is far bigger a place and there are much better destinations that you can consider look forward to and your child might be extremely happy and yet successful if he or she finds the right fitting university for himself or herself instead of going into a rat race uh and and that's the reason why you need to take such sessions very very constructively uh so that you have you have your options open uh you are empowered with knowledge so that you can take an informed decision 
हम सबको हम सबको डिसीजन लेना आता है बट शायद किसी किसी को ही इन्फॉर्म डिसीजन लेना आता है इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू टेक एन इन्फॉर्म डिसीजन एंड लेट मी अगेन रियाइटरेट यू क्यू यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ क्वींसलैंड happens to be one of the finest universities in the world among top 50 number 2 in australia and and you should definitely go out there and and explore their website come and meet them at global ed connect 2020 which is happening tomorrow at 5 pm uh, if you have not registered so far it is fairly simple go to www.globaledconnect.com the link is flashing on your screens it's been posted multiple times on our instagram handles it's there in the bio uh, imagine that it is such an event where some of the big time influencers have are posting it on their stories i just realized fatima agarkar wife of ajit agarkar has posted on her story about global ed connect so it's a great event you really need to go get inside the event click on the booth of university of queensland and go and ask anybody who is representing uq there all the difficult questions that you want to ask uh Going back to Anaga, Anaga. Apart from just the rankings, I appreciate your rankings are speaking for itself. I definitely appreciate that as a career coach, I have full faith in the delivery, in the quality of education, in the quality of research the UQ brings onto the table. I am now talking on behalf of all the six hundred fifty plus moms and kids listening to us right now, right? when i look at a university quality of education research is one part the other part is what is the kind of experience my child is going to get in those 3 4 years right what is the student experience like uh, what opportunities do indian students have when they explore studying at one of the top 50 universities in the world especially at university of queensland Okay, so like you said, when students leave their home country, Abhishek, they're going abroad for more than just an education. They're going for an overall experience. Now, like you said, we do offer world class um, education at UQ. Everything is research based. But in in addition to that, we have uh, the best employability best employability team for our faculties. We are connected with over two hundred and twenty different. Um, organizations we we host something known as employability week at the very start of the semester so students get to interact with people from these different organizations different levels also from these organizations and get to know the kind of career opportunities that are available in real time so it can be um an internship it it can be graduate placement programs you know but they're talking to people that are that know exactly what's happening in the market and we hand this to them on a silver platter they just need to take it also our uh, employability team um helps students with fixing their resumes even teaching them body language when it comes to appearing for an interview so these are all additional things that we give students uh, apart from of course the education that we do and you know there are a lot of programs where we offer a placement option where we will find students uh, an internship during the course of their semester so everything that they've taught theoretically in class can be put practically uh, into use in the real world and this acts as a foot in the door this acts as a stepping stone for them to actually get a full time job once they once they graduated so yeah that's just a few things that we do at uq all right before we go to the next question to remy i have to answer this neha wadwa is asking me she heard my poem and she's asking me that uh, how come from a humble background you all all the way you went to ucla uh, neha ek uh, एक और शेर याद आता है जो आ, आ, अनाघा बोलेंगी कि मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा है सो यू नो पॉसिबली वंस वी आर डन विद दिस डिस्कशन नेहा आई डेफिनेटली रिसाइड दैट शेयर टू यू एंड दैट विल आंसर योर क्वेश्चन मीन वाई लेट मी जस्ट क्विकली कंप्लीट विद द विद थ्री और फोर मोर क्वेश्चन दैट आई हैव बिफोर आई गो इन टू द क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द ऑडियंस and i can see some very relevant questions coming in and 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 i assure you that we will definitely take it uh, ladies you'll have to uh, you know excuse your sleep for some more time today okay uh remy my question to you is and i have written it down uh what's the situation after covid in australia because uh, in current i i'm not going to say that it's going to be a it's a difficult situation 
uh, I'm not going to say it's a difficult time. Uh, it's just a different time. We all are getting used to things doing differently. Uh, how is it in Australia? How is it uh, coping up? Uh, what was the situation out there for a parent to start considering, especially for all the mothers and the fathers who are, or the kids who are listening, and, and they are in grade 12 right now, almost on the verge of their application. Uh, how should they consider? Because safety is definitely a concern on their mind. Uh, of course, uh, Bishik. So Australia as a country has been able to manage the outbreak much more efficiently than any other countries, as you can uh, see that. As on today, uh, Queensland, uh, with other states like New South Wales or Victoria, Northern Territory, uh, um, has had no new cases. It's zero cases, zero new cases in these states, with a total of only 10 new cases registered in Australia as on today. So um, this is uh, looking very healthy. Um, and obviously, uh, the uh, domestic borders are expected to uh, reopen by Christmas allowing people to travel across borders. Moreover, Australia is the only country to secure a vaccine deal, and which is a great uh, thing to talk about, right? So UQ vaccine is providing to be safe through the phase one clinical trials, and it's pro pro proving to be producing positive antibody responses. And we are hopeful that if the vaccine passes the trial, uh, then it would be available towards the uh, second half of next year. And uh, Australian government has also signed a deal to acquire 51 million doses of the vaccine if it passes the final stages of the test. So for a student, for parents, for counselors, this is good news as things are taking a positive turn in Australia with reduced cases, domestic borders opening up, health safety being of uh, at most priority for the uh, uh, nation. And so they may expect to be in a country that is safer um, uh, once borders open up. And hopefully uh, that is what we are looking forward to once everything stabilizes and once they are confident that they can handle incoming international students and ensure their safety, they're going to open borders for them. So we all have to wait until then. We have a lot of support systems in place for students who are looking forward to studying. Uh, we have started with the uh, online classes. If all the borders are not open, students can now commence online and continue to study on campus when um, the borders open up. So to support that, we have introduced tuition fee rebates, quarantine relief fund support, uh, and a lot of other support systems uh, in the university for students. Wonderful, wonderful. So that gives me a lot of confidence that uh, definitely government is taking steps, UQ is taking steps. Uh, both on the funding side as well as the safety side. So this is this is pretty heartening. Uh, uh, me. Abhishek, it would be okay for me to stop you there and just add to what Remy said. Okay. You know, um, like you said, yes, we're doing everything we can for the students. And it's important to understand that um, our students that are going to be commencing now are only going to be graduating in the next three or four years. So we're only starting our course with online. And in fact, this is being looked at very uh, well by employers because they're looking at it as from a perspective that students are trying to overcome a, a hurdle, not run away from it. So even though they take that on, they're taking that step to do online is that they're going out of their comfort zones. That's looked at extremely positively. We will not be, um, you know, compromising on our quality at all. In fact, the platforms that we're offering our, our online education is fantastic. And we've been getting some amazing feedback from students that have already started uh, studying with us online. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to put it out there that, you know, online is it's something that everyone needs to start getting comfortable with because we don't hopefully. This oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yes, all right, and 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 let me tell you, uh, you know, to all the people who are listening to us right now, uh, I am doing, uh, I'm hosting an event called Global Ed Connect 2020 tomorrow. Uh, most of you are aware about it. Uh, there is one panel discussion which is happening tomorrow, uh, which I intentionally titled and I am chairing it. It's called Click Brick Click: The New Way Forward for Education. So all of us were used to the brick model of education since the Gurukul days till, till about March of this year, all of a sudden we went into completely click-based education, uh, which will possibly sustain till the time COVID settles down. Even when the COVID settles down, believe you me, world, whether it's UQ or whether it's Harvard, and let me tell you honestly, it's going to be click, brick, and click because the, the curve has shifted, ladies and gentlemen. It has shifted big time. And uh, 
it might just uh, you know come down a little but it is definitely definitely not coming back to the earlier levels so you better get used to uh, what uh, the idea is that possibly 10 years down the line we would have achieved this situation covid just fastened the entire process that's the only thing that has happened all right so so please be rest assured that we need to get used to this amalgamation of face to face and virtual learning please understand that and accept it the sooner you accept it the better it will be for you all right coming back to couple of questions which the audience is asking i can't hold them uh, more and and please feel free whoever uh, wishes to take this question uh, these are very specific questions but i definitely want to ask uh, do you offer computer sciences at university of queensland can you share some more information around that I'm happy to take that question. Yeah. 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 We do offer a uh, computer science on the bachelor level. We are world top 50 uh, for the course. Uh, I'm happy to. Am I allowed to share links, Abhishek? Uh, the links will not go directly on the Facebook. What you can do is after the session, uh, post all the links to me on the email. We'll plaster it across our properties. We are not Perfect. on Facebook directly, Anaga. So uh, nothing that you post here will actually go onto the Facebook. Okay, so um, so we're happy to again, you know, to the person that asked the question, and I'm sure lots of people are asking about the computer science program, because uh, you said you know everything is going online. Uh, it's going to be what every student is going to want to study. Uh, specific questions would be great uh, if we could answer it in tomorrow's session, because Remy will be able to counsel students one on one. But we do offer it. We have specializations like data science, uh, software engineering as well under the computer science. Um, and things like that. So uh, I think it's, and we can also talk about scholarships specifically um, tomorrow when it comes well, to programs. We will talk about scholarships today. Okay, we there will. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so um, sorry, I thought you were going to actually ask me a different question about scholarships, but if you just want me to continue, by all means. <laughs> So we do offer a range of different scholarships at UQ. Um, of course, because we are a world top 50 university, we give scholarships out based on merit, predominantly ac academic merit, but it's also important that students put in a profile, put in a statement of purpose and tell us about all of the extracurriculars that they have done. Um, we of course have a specific web page for our scholarships um, and every scholarship has its own start date, its own end date and its own eligibility criteria. Now, we also have subject wise specific scholarships and nationwide specific scholarships. So just to give you an example, um, we have something known that known as the High Achievers Scholarship, which is a 20 percent uh, tuition fee. Uh, basically, it's 20 percent off of your tuition fee. That's just one out of the many. Like, for example, we have the India Global Leaders, which is, again, only for the business faculty, only for Indian students. And it's, again, 20 percent off of your entire tuition fee. So we have a lot. Um, uh, it's program specific and um, again tomorrow I, I, you know, I'm promoting this so that we have people at our booth tomorrow um, Remy hopefully will be able to share her screen and show you how to navigate through the website and to see the scholarship page and, and all of that that you need all right ladies and gentlemen uh, this is time where I need to remind because uh, Anaga has said this twice and I think as a good host I need to reiterate it Yes, University of Queensland is represented at Global Ed Connect 2020. Yes, they will be present to answer all your individual queries. You need to go out there in big numbers, make them feel the heat of high school moms, ask them the relevant questions, and Remy will be there to answer all your questions and counsel you individually. That brings me to my next question. But before that, up to ek share I get Anaga. whether you understand it or you don't. So uh Guys, you need to understand this. When Anaga says that uh, they have merit-based scholarships, she subtly says that we look at academics, but we also want a great essay and a great profile. And I this thing that you guys have to understand is that you don't have to go to the sky, don't go to the sky, don't go to the sky, don't go to the sky, what is life? Just so the best learning happens outside the classroom. Uh, you need to allow your kids to explore multiple interests, whether music or sports or debating or reading. You need to allow your kids to think beyond the textbooks because that's what the universities are looking for right now. A child will not be able to write 10 good lines about himself or herself if the child has not you know, literally done something outside the classroom. 
outside the four walls of the classroom. Uh, you know, you also need to understand writing a good personal statement in a personal essay is critical to any university's selection, not just University of Queensland, but the higher you go in the ranking order, that's how more pertinent and important it becomes. Uh, and you will not be able to write a good personal statement if you do not reflect upon yourself. Uh, you know, there is there's a nice phrase in English which says retrospect and introspect for a better prospect. So make your kids start retrospecting, introspecting today onwards so that they can write one phenomenal personal statement. And these two ladies have no other option but to give you an admission and to offer a scholarship. So you got to do that. Coming back to uh, my next question uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, if, if any of you wants to take it, please do take it. Uh, regarding the application, and obviously we are talking about the kids who are listening right now who are in grade 12, uh, IBDP2 uh, and alike. Uh, and one question is also there by, by one of the persons list, uh, you know, listening to our talk right now. I can't, I can't see the name. They have not given the access to StreamYard. But the question is, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll broaden the question. Uh, how can a student from grade 12 initiate the application process to UQ? That's my question, uh, part number one. And part two is, like there is a common app in US, like there is UCAS, uh, you know, uh, or OUAC in Canada, uh, do you also have something called a common app for group of eight, or you need to apply individually to UQ? Please. Any of you? I think I'm going to steal this question again, Remy, and please feel free to add, uh, <laughs> you know, while I'm speaking. But um, Abhishek, to let you know, when you're applying to the University of Queensland, you can just use our portal. It's a very easy, straightforward and intuitive uh, portal. It will take you step by step. And I think I'm just going to take this opportunity to let everyone know that most Australian universities have two intakes every year. So one is in February and another is in July. The July intake is kind of the biggest intake um, for us because it lines up with the exams that we finish in India. Now, there are no there is absolutely no difference between either one of the intakes. They're the same because I do know in America, one intake is bigger than the other. So it's not the case in, in Australia. So we don't want students waiting six months or taking time off unless they want to, of course. But um, the July intake tends to be bigger. Now, a good time also for year 12 students to start their applications would be now. Um, so, you know, November, December is a great time. They can speak to their counselors, now finalize on a course. Um, and of course, shortlist to university, finalize a course. It's very important that students look at the subjects that they're going to be studying. And the reason I say this is because different universities use different nomenclatures for the same program. So it can be, let's say, for example, some universities call data analytics as data analytics, whereas other universities can call it business information systems. But it's typically the same thing, which is why students need to be breaking it down and looking at the individual subjects you're studying in a course. So once you finalize on a subject, you um, and um, hopefully it's going to be at UQ, um, you then just go onto our website. You can click on the apply now button. Like I said, it's a fairly intuitive process. It'll take you step by step asking you um, to upload documents and things like that. And when it comes to a payment page, if you're doing it through your school or your counselor, um, there are ways that we can help you with an application waiver as well. Um, after which, you know, if you've met our conditions, you will receive a, uh, an unconditional offer letter. But if you have any conditions remaining, you'll have a conditional offer letter. After, at this step is when you can start applying for scholarships with us. And then it's a it's a very seamless process. You um, after that, we have a pre departure event, which is where we get to. I mean, all the students that have accepted their offers get to meet on a common platform. Um, we introduce each other, we introduce them to each other so they can make some friends before they leave the country. And the rest is history. You then start your journey in Australia. So, yeah. All right. Start your journey <laughs> in Australia. All right. Uh, okay. My, my, my next question is from, from the audience here. And uh, I know the lady who is asking, she is Dr. Sarmishta Patra. And uh, I have counseled her kid. But since she's asking the question here, we definitely have to take it up. Do you guys offer sports sciences or any course integrated with sports management? Do you have any course related to sports? Please shoot. Yes, uh, maybe I can take that question. Uh, we do offer sports related courses. Uh, we have uh, students who are looking at sports physiology, uh, sports uh, nutrition exercise. We do have some options. However, I would really like to know what exactly are they planning 
uh, to do post completion of their bachelors uh, so that I can direct them to the right program. So I would um, request you to come and speak to me tomorrow so that I, we can, um, you know, discuss this in depth and see what this program is leading you to because I do have some options to give you and then uh, we can uh, have a great discussion about it. All right, Dr. Patra, you in there, though. Yeah, sorry, Abhitek. Uh, since you like talking, I'm I'm kind of a person that likes to talk as well, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, <laughs> our sports science courses, we're, we're ranked number three in the world for it. So yes, definitely yeah. interested in sports sciences. Uh, Demi's going to give you all of the information that you need tomorrow. Specifically, she will share the links. She will show you about scholarships, all of that. It's just going to be a little difficult to do it now because we can't share links. So meet us tomorrow. <laughs> You 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 said I like talking or you said you yourself like talking? I said you I, like talking and I'm also yeah. admitting that I like so, talking. So, so, <laughs> so, so I'm in the middle of two people who loves talking. So please, <laughs> Literally please, sandwich. So please appreciate the only thing I know how to, what to do is, is is talking, right? And I get paid for talking, right? So plain and simple. I'm I'm still at work. All right, so, uh, <laughs> okay, Remy, Remy, coming back to you, and yeah. this is an important question. Uh, yes. Most often than not, when you think of UK, you'll say, I want to go to London, right? Uh, when you think of US, you'll say, I want to go to New York. Though, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, I had an offer from NYU. I gave it up because I hate, I hate winters, all right? So it, at times, it is very, very important to also see whether your child will enjoy the journey of next three or four years or not, or it'll become too cumbersome for the child to live through those, those beautiful high school to college years, uh, you know, and, and it'll become a, a pain rather than a, a pleasant experience. So a lot of things are supposed to be taken into account before identifying the right fitting university. And it is not just the course, it might also be the size, it might also be the location, and it might also be the weather. So uh, so please take take into account all of these. And, um, and Dr. Patra, definitely, uh, please go and meet uh, Remy uh, in her booth tomorrow at Global Ed Connect. And she should be able to give you some options regarding sports management or sports sciences. Remy, coming back to the question, US, New York, UK, London. Uh, if I talk about Australia, the first city that would come to my mind is Sydney and maybe then Melbourne, right? Uh, no, for me, it might be even the Gold Coast, but, uh, but yeah, Sydney and Melbourne, right? So uh, why Brisbane? Okay, uh, uh, it's an interesting question to answer because uh, uh, Brisbane uh, is in fact third largest city in Australia and it's still growing to be the preferred city for international students. Very immigrant friendly uh, with just 2.4 million people living in the uh, city and 28% of Brisbane residents are born overseas. So it has got a lot of immigrant population. And Brisbane is also tagged as uh, the Silicon Valley of Australia with an emerging startup culture with the kind of support extended by the Queensland government to nurture the um, uh, startup culture, inviting a lot of foreign funded companies to come and headquarter in the land. It is looking very, very promising for an international student uh, to look at an emerging city like Brisbane. Uh, off late, I, I would say in the past two years, we've seen a good spike, a lot of traction uh, towards Brisbane in terms of uh, students uh, choosing Brisbane as a study destination. And uh, if you re really know, um, Australian government has bifurcated. So most locations of Australia outside the major cities of Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane are classified as designated regional areas by the government. And they do it primarily for migration purposes. The regional cities comparatively need the resources, skilled labor, more infrastructure is looking to develop further. And um, and so they have classified these kind of cities into the regional cities. And Brisbane falls under the non-regional uh, category and we are quite happy with that, uh, which is also um, an indicator that we are much more developed and advanced. And so there is less competition uh, comparatively. You spoke about Sydney, uh, you spoke about Melbourne. Uh, since Brisbane has lesser population, uh, cost of living is uh, lower comparatively still giving a lot of opportunities, lowest unemployability rates, being a non-regional category uh, you know, city. Uh, it's less competition, has a very healthy job market. So it's looking much more promising for an international student. So the reason why you're seeing that graph moving um, um, high um, towards Brisbane as a study destination, and I'm, it's still continuing to grow uh, as we can see. 
All right. So, so let me. And yeah. Abhi, wait, I thought you were going to know that I was going to add to it. Go <laughs> ahead. Got to let you move Go on. Ahead. <laughs> This is, this is so, going um, strong, all right. At at eleven o'clock in the night, we are seven minutes away from eleven, and almost five hundred and eighty still holding on. Believe me, they are enjoying. <laughs> otherwise, these are mothers. They know how to get their husbands right. We are nobody, all right. So, <laughs> I am telling you. They I, are know, I will start thinking ten o'clock. I am going to ten fifteen. I am going to be asleep. But this is actually lots of fun. Abhishek, thanks for having us on board. Um, but you know, just going, just uh, I, I'm mindful of the time, of course. Um, but just adding on to what Remy has said, yes, Sydney and uh, Sydney and Melbourne are obviously the first first cities that you know someone thinks about when they think about Australia. But they're very saturated markets. Everybody's going there. And they're not growing as fast as Brisbane is. We're the fastest growing city in the entire Asia Pacific region, not just in the country. And what does that mean? That means that there are so many jobs that are available. Most of the headquarters are even headquartered. Uh, so most of the headquarters organizations um, have headquarters in Brisbane. In fact, people are moving away from Melbourne and Sydney for job opportunities in Brisbane. Now, Sydney and Melbourne both have two group of eight universities each. So there's again competition within the city there. Whereas we're the only group of eight um, university in our entire state, not only in our city. So we're the preferred choice. So when you think about all of these things, and of course we're only one hour away from Gold Coast, so uh, the Great Barrier Reef is also in the same state as us. Um, so students early in, and like you said, we take for we take you know, being in India, we take for granted the weather that we have. Um, winter is yes very depressing, especially if students are living at such a young age of 17, 18. Um, suddenly they go to a different country, and it, the sun rises at 9:30, sets at 3:30 p.m., and you don't have any daylight hours, and it's rainy and cold. Yes, it's definitely depressing. But Brisbane is blessed with um, blue skies and green grasses all year round. You have about your average temperature is about 21 to 28 degrees all year round. So you don't really feel that. And you're just excited all the time because you can, you can camp outside, you can learn to stop, you can do so many things. And of course, I will not stop talking. And I can see Abhishek is like, we have to go to the next question. <laughs> so I was, and that was just a few things we're going to add. I'm definitely going to cut short some of them. Anyways, but, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, Brisbane is like uh, near home. You will not feel out of place if you're there in Brisbane. Uh, if, I have give, if I have to give you some analogies, uh, you know, personally, yes, you feel in Brisbane, and uh, uh, but when I when I look at Australia as a as a country, uh, I, I personally feel that uh, it's about time Sydney is too saturated. Places like uh, you know Adelaide and places like Brisbane are 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 the places to be in. They are coming up. They have uh, a far better ecosystem than uh, a, a place like Sydney. So uh, so definitely definitely it's one of the preferred choices. My last question. To both of you, ladies, uh, before I let you go, give me. I, I understood everything, and I'm sold out. As a career coach, I'm sold out. And and my suggestion to all the mothers and the fathers and the kids listening to these two, tomorrow you gotta be at Global Ed Connect 2020. Register at www.globaledconnect.com. Link is there in our Instagram bio. It's there on our story. It's there on your Facebook pages. Whichever page you're viewing us right now. It's right there. So go ahead and register, uh, and 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 please go and meet uh, Ramiyatha Vergis tomorrow in the UQ booth, and she will have all the answers to your questions. And that's the reason that she's saving her energy, and she's calling both of us uh, chatbots, right? She's just saving her energy for tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing more than that, believe you me. Nothing more than that. All right. So she is all set to answer all your questions tomorrow. My last question to both of you: Give me. Give me four reasons, two each, right? Two each before you part of ways. Why should, as a father, and you know, as as the face of high school moms, I should keep UQ as one of my top choices. One. Second, what are those two or three or four courses, right? That you really want to recommend people that they should consider UQ as one of the most preferred choices for at least these four or five courses. And this is not as, and Sagar, if you're listening, this question is on me. The answer is also on me uh, because uh, I want a very candid answer. I don't want to hear UQ is best for everything. It is indeed best for everything. What I want to hear is heart to heart. So Mr. Bahadur, if you're listening, 
my apologies for putting putting two of your colleagues onto the back foot. Go ahead, please. Okay, so I'll take that first. So as usual, um, no, we're happy to answer this question because um, you know we of course know the the popular programs and the ones that students are taking up. Uh, other than just the rankings that we've spoken about, we have the eleventh most beautiful campus in the world. And again, Remy is definitely going to show that to you. Um, we are completely a city within a city. So once you're studying with us at UQ. There is no need for you to even leave the campus. We're extremely safe. Um, we have everything from a post office to a doctor on campus to a movie theater, you name it, we all have it on campus. So that you really have that campus experience when you study with us at UQ. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, talking about the courses, um, we have a fantastic cybersecurity program. This is at a master. I'm talking about a master's degree also. Um, we have someone from the government that structured this program. So everything that we have for cybersecurity is um, actually taken from real life experience where they know they're going to be using it. That's what they've structured and put into our curriculum. So and in fact, um, our engineering faculty in general, everything that we have uh, we have, you know, structured comes from the fact that we know students are going to be using it in the real world. So that's what I wanted. To Remy, let do you want to add something before I let you go, guys? Uh, yes. Um, and there are two things that I want parents to consider as you think about uh, sending uh, your kids to uh, the university. One is uh, uh, the opportunity students have to be relevant. Uh, whatever uh, qualifications you have, whatever you study, wherever you are, if you are not in a relevant space or if you are not relevant, it's not going to help you. So. The entire architecture of the program that we give uh, embeds in it a lot of opportunity for students to go beyond their comfort zones, shape themselves, and be good at what we are doing. Second thing that I would highlight is kind of support system that we have in place. Uh, many parents talk about traveling with their children. Uh, many parents ask us about how safe is it uh, for them in terms of safety, in terms of any support that a student needs. because. I've seen two intakes over the university already, and I'm very, very confident about the world-class education we give and the world-class service we give in terms of what uh, parents would be looking for and in terms of what students would be looking for. That's two things. In terms of programs, I would also recommend um, uh, students looking at uh, programs like economics, um, psychology, which are gaining a lot more popularity. Uh, we have uh, amazing programs in place. Um, so when you meet us tomorrow, we will talk more about it. Uh, as we have seen a lot of inquiries coming in for the same conference as well. Right. So ladies and gentlemen, being relevant is what UQ teaches you to be. And uh, there's a famous quote which says that if you are different, people might just notice you. But if you are relevant, people might just love you. So uh, you've got to be relevant uh, in today's world. And that's what uh, the message is coming from both Anaga Shetty and Remy. Remyatha Burgess, all right. So, uh, pardon me, it's, it's such a tongue twister. Yeah. I mean, all right, okay. So, uh, so, so this was uh, the session with the, the University of Queensland, and I can safely vouch that uh, it is one of the finest universities you can definitely explore for your child. And I can see Sagar Bahadur giving a thumbs up. So he heard me, Sagar. I love you, man. Thank you. Um, Okay, so so definitely consider the University of Queensland, uh, one of the one of the universities in in Group of Eight, uh, university which is among top fifty in the world, university which is number two in Australia, situated in Brisbane, uh, and and there you are uh, talking about a place where your child will be not away from home, uh, in a very similar environment and a very similar weather conditions. So uh, uh, your child is definitely going to enjoy his or her stint at the UQ. I'm very, very sure of that. And obviously, last but not the least, UQ not only offers great quality education, but has some of the finest scholarships to offer. If you, if you deserve it, they'll definitely not let you go. And they make you relevant for the future. With that, I thank you both uh, Remy and Anaga for joining us tonight, uh, for taking out your uh, precious hour at this ungodly hour, uh, but uh, you can understand if uh, almost 500 mothers are still hooked on. Uh, I'm sure your one hour was definitely worth it because it did leave a lot of parents to take something back home in the sleep, to ponder over it, to sleep over it, 
and to take a decision. And please do expect a lot of inquiries tomorrow in your booth. Thank you so very much. Uh, let me just quickly say bye to everybody who is here. And uh, in the end, jate jate ek share jaru bolunga aapko. Mushkilon se bhag jana asan hota hai. Mushkilon se bhag jana asan hota hai. Har pehlu zindagi ka imtihan hota hai. Darne walon ko nahi milta kuch bhi zindagi mein. Ladne walon ke kadmo mein jahan hota hai. Ladies and gentlemen, teach your kids how to be resilient. Teach them how to fight. World is never an ideal place. Life will never be a roller coaster. If only we could teach them how to be resilient, they will know how to fight it out. At the end of the day, what matters is the attitude, not the aptitude. So if you have the right attitude, you will definitely find your children to be successful. Spend desert time with your kids. If you spend time with them today, they will definitely spend time when you are old. And that's what you would be looking forward to that time. With that, I'll close it today. Look forward to see you all tomorrow at Global Ed Connect. Let's make it big. There are a lot of people you know are looking up to me. They're going to judge me tomorrow. Tomorrow night, it all depends. If the event is successful or if the event is super successful, these are the only two options that I have in front of me. Make it super successful. Stay home, stay indoors, keep yourself safe because that's the only way you can keep everybody else outside safe. Thank you. Good night. Jai Hind.